The biggest BYD Blade battery is actually located in Saudi Arabia. It's the largest single phase battery in the world. It's just been turned on and it's set to power millions of homes. You would think, right, Saudi Arabia, surely their, their main gig is oil. You know, they just basically drill millions of gallons of oil. So therefore, why would they bother with renewables? But actually, all across the Middle East, countries are going green. They are building out enormous, massive, massive solar farms that are just bigger than the eye can see and huge battery packs to store all that electricity. What this means is they've now discovered you can in fact have a grid that runs purely off solar backed up by batteries, especially when you live in the desert. The world's largest battery project it was just being built in the desert. It's just been turned on. And it is utilizing BYD's Blade batteries. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, this is the biggest battery in the world that's currently switched on. Largest single phase. But there are more batteries that are bigger than this that are currently being built. So it won't be the largest in the world for very long. And that's pretty normal now. You know, only a few years ago, Tesla built the biggest battery in the world here in Australia, in a place called Adelaide in South Australia. It's now considered really, really small. So that's how things are trending at the moment. This new mega battery, battery is located in Saudi Arabia, and it is a 500 megawatt, 2000 megawatt hour facility in Bisha, Asia province. It is the world's largest single phase energy storage project. And it will give around eight hours run time. Now, the system includes 122 prefabricated battery units built by BYD. Basically, 122 mega packs. They're sort of a similar size to a Tesla um, crate, box, mega pack battery. All of them are lithium ion phosphate batteries. Now, they're designed, the system is designed by Power China Hubei Engineering. And it was built to withstand extreme temperatures extreme desert-like conditions. So Saudi Arabia, it can get over 50 degrees Celsius. That is insanely, insanely hot. Therefore, you don't want a battery pack from LG Chem. You don't want an NMC battery. The kind of batteries you get in a lot of EVs today, for example, the Hyundai Ionic 5, uh, the Porsche Taycan, quite a few different cars. Um, basically every General Motors EV in North America, in the United States, they will use NMC batteries. And those would probably not be ideal in this setting where temperatures can get inc incredibly hot. Now, keep in mind, the ambient temperature is gonna be maybe 50 degrees Celsius, but the temperature that's gonna be hitting inside this stationary storage project could reach 70, 80 degrees Celsius. It could get ridiculously hot. So they do need fans to keep the batteries pack, the battery packs cool. Now the project aligns with Vision 2030, aiming for 50% renewable energy by integrating solar and wind power. And Saudi Arabia procurement company is tendering four more batteries to be built, not no, basically nearby. All of these four batteries will be exactly the same in size. They'll be a 500 megawatt, 2000 megawatt hour battery projects. What that means is that within a few years time, there'll be five mega batteries that could potentially power around 15 million households. Five of the biggest batteries in the world, essentially all in one country, powering, well, a very large percentage of the population there. These batteries will be connected to massive solar farms. And we're now seeing in the Middle East, um, we're all, and we're now seeing in the Middle East that People are starting to recognize you don't actually need wind base load or nuclear base load or coal base load or gas base load. The battery can actually act as the base load itself. So we just saw yesterday uh, one of the biggest batteries in the world that is actually a battery and solar project. It can run it can run 24 hours a day. It can provide power 24 hours a day. And we're going to see more of these projects being built out across desert-like regions 90% of the world's population live on the Sun Belt. So they will really... So what that means is that most of the world's population can actually have an electricity grid that just runs purely off solar and batteries. And this was something that Tony Sieber predicted 10 years ago. He said it could happen. Now, in many locations, 
you'll benefit from wind as well, from offshore wind, onshore wind. That would certainly be a benefit for many locations, but it's not necessary. So what are your thoughts, guys? Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye. You know, guys, if you follow the German media, the German media have, have been telling Germans that power prices have gone up because of renewable energy. This is actually completely false. In fact, renewable energy in Germany, it did rise this year significantly because primarily of more battery storage and a bit more wind and solar. But prices for electricity skyrocketed when renewables weren't at their full generating capacity in the months of November and December. Basically, Germans have been tricked into believing renewables are hurting them, but actually it's coal power plants and gas peaker plants that are turning on during winter. It's also companies wanting to profit from you. Germany has just hit a staggering 63% renewables in 2024. 63, well, technically, actually, guys, sorry. I lie, 62.7%. By the time you're watching this video, they're probably at around 65%. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. Guys, Germany, renewable energy in Germany is skyrocketing. Now, surprisingly, solar contributes only 14% of that total. The Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems reports that Germany generated 72.2 terawatt hours of solar in Germany in 2024. Now, that accounted for 14% of total electricity generation. So what is going on in Germany? What are the numbers behind what's happening in Germany? For one, Germany has retired I believe some of its nuclear power. So it's making the switch to renewables. Germany generated 72.2 terawatt hours of solar power in 2024. That accounted to 14% of its total output. Wind power remained Germany's largest source of electricity, generating a staggering 136.4 terawatt hours, or nearly twice as much as what solar generated. I mean, that's a pretty good result, I think. PV generation set a production record of 72.2 terawatt hours, despite less favorable weather due to the rapid expansion of solar capacity. So where was this electricity actually going to? Well, reports show that 12.4 terawatt hours of this total was used for solar self-consumption, marking an 18% year-on-year increase and raising the share of solar PV in electricity generation. July was a record month with solar system producing 10.7 terawatt hours. I mean, if, for example, we saw July every month, we would have seen what, 100 and, more than 120, about 125 terawatt hours of energy to come from solar alone. But we only saw, what was it, around 72.2. So you can see a lot more sun in July. Therefore, a lot more energy was created. 